Okay, flame tests. All right, these are amazing. Have you ever thought about why fireworks look the way they do? Why we get the reds, why we get the blues, why we get the yellows? Well, that's all to do with atomic structure, believe it or not. And uh, a common prac that uh, we're going to do in class is the fact that you put chemicals into a flame and then you see the color. It's pretty cool. So the fireworks you can see on the side there is due to the different colors or the different elements present in the firework. Now, not only that, from this knowledge, we can work out about other things. I mean, we can work out this, this, the structure of stars, the, the color and temperature of stars, the chemical composition of planets. Um, we can use it in forensic science to work out what type of drug is present. So from this concept we're doing today, flame tests and electron shells, we can learn a lot of chemistry and physics. So let's have a look at what's going on here. Well, here's our structure of an atom. We have different shells. And so we have the first shell, second shell, third shell. And they have particular names. Um, sometimes this is referred to as the K, L, and M shell. Okay. But here's the fundamental thing that makes these colors. So if we can imagine that we have a little bit of energy, right? A little bit of energy comes into the atom. And that energy hits an electron. So let's say an electron is there on the innermost shell. And this energy, it can be anything. We're going to use um, Bunsen burner, so heat energy. But it could be other types of energy as well. We could use lights. We could use electricity. The fact that we have fluorescent globes above you in the classroom and here along the sides here is that we're using um, electrical energy to cause electrons to excite and make light. Well, we're going to be making light in the Bunsen burner, but colored light. So the heat energy comes in. That energy causes that electron to gain some energy and jump up to a higher energy level. And so it goes from energy level number one to energy level number three. Now, that can only happen temporarily because it's unstable. It's not supposed to be there. So what happens is when that, when that electron comes back down, right, back to where it's supposed to be, the energy that it was gained is lost as light energy. Okay? And depending upon the type of atom we're talking about, that light energy will have different colors. So uh, my favorite, of course, is copper sulfate. You, uh, you ignite that, and um, the heat energy causes the electrons in the copper sulfate to jump up to a higher level. But when the electrons go back down again, they release light in terms of the green color of the spectrum. And so copper, when, it, when you uh, give it lots of heat, gives it that green glow. Okay, always reminds me of the good old Harry Potter goblet of fire color. Right, it's pretty cool. So flame tests are a way to identify types of metal ions present based on their color. So let's write that down. Flame tests identify. Okay, they identify metals in a solution based on their color. So if you heat a solution up with some in the Bunsen burner and it turns out to be yellow, then that's saying you have sodium. As we said before, if it was green, right, then that was going to be copper. If you have like a crimson red, then it's probably going to be strontium. So the different colors that you see uh, allow you to identify what type of metal ions are present in a mixture. Now the more chemistry you do, we can be more specific about that. We can use a special device called a spectroscope, and that spectroscope splits the color up into specific lines. So you might see um, yellow with your naked eye, but when you look with a spectroscope, you're going to get more detail. And down the bottom here, you'll have wavelengths, okay? And as you know, the, the normal visible light of spectrum is red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. These are the longer wavelengths up in red, and the violet are the shorter wavelengths. And so if we have yellow, yellow's here, but then of course there's different wavelengths. And so you might find that the yellow that you see with your eyes is actually made up of different specific wavelengths of yellow that you can't determine with your eye, but of course a spectroscope can. And so it's like a fingerprint. 
And so we can use this understanding that if we use instruments to analyze the light that's coming away, it's like a fingerprint pattern that we can use to determine what type of um, element is present and how much is there. It's pretty cool. So that's electron shells and flame test. Have fun doing the prac, and uh, I'll catch you in the next video for more chemistry.